Hello everyone, it's me Sanjay Vasu back again for another video. This time it's on a Cambridge Lower Secondary Checkpoint Science Paper 2 for April 2020. Question 7. Water and minerals move to the flowering plants. A. Complete the sentences about how water and minerals move to a plant. Choose parts of a plant from the list. Each part can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Water and minerals enter plants through the dashed cells. Utasos. The water and mineral solutions transport in the stems to dash cells. Xylem cells. The solution leaches the dash cells in the leaves and is used for growth. Palisade mesophyll cells. What do we mean by all of these cells? Xylem cells are the cells which carry water to the stem of a plant. There will always be xylem cells present. It transfers from the roots to the leaves. Root hair cells are the ones which absorb water from the soil. They're present in the roots. And palisade mesophyll cells are the cells containing lots of chlorophyll. They are present in leaves. B. Plants need water to make sugar. Name two other things that plants need to make sugar. This is practically that the plants need to make glucose, and that means what do they need for photosynthesis. They need carbon dioxide and sunlight. That's the answer. Question 8. The diagram shows different types of rocks and how they form. So first, due to volcanic eruptions, igneous rocks are formed. Then they become sediments to form sedimentary rocks. Then they form rock X, and then they turn into magma, and then again volcanic eruptions, and then continue the cycle. A. Sedimentary rocks can be turned into rock X by heat and pressure. What type of rock is X? The only three types of rocks, two of them are given, the last one's metamorphic rocks. B. Which layer of the earth contains magma? Circle the correct answer. Atmosphere? Nope. Inner core? Nope. That's two in. Mantle? Yes, it's the mantle. It's not too far below the crust. It's just the next layer. And the outer core? Obviously not. Answer is mantle. C. Sedimentary rocks often contain the remains of dead animals and plants from millions of years ago. What words used to describe these remains? Fossils. Very easy. D. Different types of soil have different amounts of organic matter in them. Which type of soil contains the most organic matter? Circle the correct answer. Clay, loam, sandy, or salt? Answer is loam. Question 9. Sound can be reflected in the same way as light. Safia and Yuri reflect the relationship between the angle of incidence x and the angle of reflection y. They use the apparatus in the diagram. Yuri puts the ticking clock next to tube A, puts the sound meter next to tube B, use the same value for angle x, use different values for angle y. Safia writes down the sound level shown on the sound meter. Complete the table about the variables. The variable change, that means the independent variable. The independent variable is the angle of y because different values of y, that means we are changing it. Value for y. Now variables to control, which means they have to be constant. Constant variables. So the position of ticking clock and the position of sound meter and then the value of x. Position of ticking clock and position of sound meter. Variable to measure, what do you mean by that value? It is the loudness of the sound.
Question 10. Look at the diagrams of cells. A. Describe one way the structure of a nerve cell is different to a cheek cell. This means that nerve cell has connections with other cell. That's the answer. B. The structure of a red blood cell is adapted for its function. Explain how. So a red blood cell. The function of this, and we need to find the adaptation. So the function of a red blood cell is to transfer oxygen to all cells in the body. And now for the adaptation. And now for red blood cells, the adaptation is that they don't have a nucleus because that enables them to carry more amount of oxygen to the cells. Therefore, we'll write no nucleus is present in the red blood cells. To maximize the amount of oxygen transported by the cells and that's the answer now i can go to question 11. mia investigates the temperature change during some reactions in each experiment mia adds a solid to a liquid she measures the temperature of the liquid before and after adding the solid a. Mia uses a measuring cylinder to measure the volume of liquid. The diagram shows part of a measuring cylinder of liquid. What's the volume of liquid in measuring cylinder? So it's greater than 2 and less than 3 centimeters cubed. You can see that there are 5 divisions between each large division. So we can divide the difference by 5. 3 minus 2 is 1 and 1 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.2. This is the distance between each or the amount or volume of liquid between each division. So if there are two more divisions, that means 2 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2. That's equal to 2.4 centimeters cubed. That's the answer. B, here are Mia's results. Liquid added. If water is added, temperature is... 17 degrees the solid added is copper sulfate then temperature of the liquid after solid is added 20 degrees change in temperature is plus 3 because 17 plus 3 is equal to 20. is the reaction exothermic or endothermic and now for liquid added water temperature 17 citric acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate added and then the temperature of the liquid after solid is added is 14 degrees. Now the copper sulfate solution is the liquid added. Temperature is 18. Zinc solid is added. And temperature is 22 degrees at the end. Number one. She does not include some important information in the headings of the table. Which unit is missing from the headings? Which unit is missing? Meaning in out of these headings, there's a unit of measurement. Unit of measurement missing. And let's see. You can't have a unit over here, liquid added. Temperature of liquid. There's no degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit or anything like that. It's not written what degree it is. So we know that even though in the question there's nothing about what unit to use, the default unit is degrees Celsius. So... We need to remember to write degrees Celsius, not only in this, but at the end, and change. Number two, calculate the change in temperature for each experiment. When it's been done for you, write the answers in the table. This is quite easy, just do the addition or subtraction. 17 minus 3 is 14, so we write minus 3 here. 18 plus 4 is 22, so we write plus 4 here. Question 3. Complete the table by writing endothermic or exothermic in the last column over here. One thing you need to remember, if there's a higher change 
or there's a positive change, that means it's exothermic. If there's negative change, it's endothermic. Exothermic means gain heat, and endothermic means lose heat. That's well. So first is exothermic. Next is endothermic. And the next one is exothermic as well. That's the answer. Question 12. Some objects become electrically charged. A. Oliver draws a diagram of two charged objects. Explain how the objects become charged. So when we rub two objects together, they become opposite charges. So the first point is rub the objects together. Second point is we can see that plastic rod is negative charge. That means it has more electrons because electrons have negative charge. And the cloth has positive charge, which means it has less electrons. Which means before both of these were neutral charge, but they have become negative and positive. Which means that electrons have transferred from the cloth to the plastic rod. Electrons have been transferred from the cloth to the plastic rod. B. Complete the sentence. Opposite charges attract. Like charges repel. This is very easy. Basic knowledge. See, Oliver put some charged balloons next to each other. Balloon A has a positive charge. What are the charges of the other balloons? A is positive. Now B is what? If A and B, they repel, that means they are the same like charges, which is also positive here. Now if B and C attract, That means they are opposite charges, which means this is negative. And now if C and D repel, that means they are like charges, which means they are also negative. That's the answer. Question 13. Diagrams are used to show how energy is transferred. Lamps transfer energy. Complete the diagram to show the type of energy that is 10 joules. So let's see what kind of energy lamps transfer. It starts with electrical energy 100 joules, then some kind of energy is 10 joules, and wasted energy, that's why it's down towards the bottom, that's thermal energy 90 joules. How do we know it's wasted? Because it's going downwards. So what useful energy is produced by a lamp? Light, right? So light energy, that's all. And with this question, we have come to the end of the video. If you learned something new from this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, and comment on how you think this video was. And with this, it's me, Sanjay Basu, signing out. Goodbye.